Hi, Hiram here. In my video, Fancy Feast Stove with No Wick, Keith Moore made a comment saying, You ask me, the wick is mainly there to act as a spacer anyway. Most of these stoves seem to need to be lit in the center anyway. Uh, I've had several people pretty much say the same thing to me, so I thought maybe I should explain why the Fancy Feast Stove needs, has a wick and how the wick works. First off, let me just say that wicks work because of something called capillary action. I'm not going to explain how capillary action is defined as the movement of liquid within the spaces of a porous material due to the forces of adhesion, cohesion, and surface tension, but rather, let's just say, that capillary action, which is also, also sometimes called wicking, is the ability of a liquid to flow in narrow spaces. This wick is just made up of all kinds of narrow spaces in there. But uh, take a paper towel for example. This is one like what I used in that other fancy feast stove with the paper towel in it. If you take paper towels absorb liquid through capillary action sucking up a liquid like if I dropped water on here you put the paper towel on it sucks the water up into the paper towel because the paper towel is porous with all kinds of little spaces in it another example of capillary action and I should have set one up but did you ever notice when you're drinking a soda like one of the dark ones coke pepsi whatever you have a glass of soda you stick the straw in it and the soda seems to come up through the straw higher than the top of your soda that's capillary action it just pulls up the liquid just gets pulled up into a narrow space uh, another example is something that almost all of us did in grade school the old celery stalk in a glass of water with food coloring you know, this is where your teacher just gets a stalk of celery, sticks it in the glass with water, colored water, and you can watch the colored water coming up through the celery. In this video, I want to do something that kind of duplicates that so that we can see what's happening. Here's just a, a jar. It's got about one inch of alcohol in the bottom that's been dyed red. Here's a piece of that new ceramic wicking. If I just put this in here like so and let it set, I don't know if you can see it there. Oops. But see how the red color is being sucked up through the wicking. Let me just let this set aside for a couple of seconds and I'll explain what it does in a fancy feast stove. Now, please excuse my artistry. I am not an artist. But let's just say, here we have a cat food can. This is the outside part of a fancy feast stove. So that's that. We're looking at this as if I'm doing a cross section of a stove. So it's just, you know, bear with me. Inside that, we have an inner can that would go like so. So that would be the inner can. That's this part. Just set down in there. If I put alcohol in here, which let's represent it with red as in the other experiment, if I have alcohol in here going up say about that high, when I try to light this stove, I can't get down to the alcohol to light it unless I do it in here. But one of the big purposes I think of a fancy feast stove is because you can set your pot on the stove and light it from the outside but in this case we can't get to the alcohol and the fumes might not get up high enough for us to hit it so what we do is we put a wick in here you know just like this one so let's put the wick in the wick would look let's say it comes up even with the top of the cat food can 
and I really should have changed these colors. Here's the wicking green. Now this red alcohol, as you can see in this, see how high up that's going? It was one inch, now it's way up there. With this, if I put the wicking into the stove, now this alcohol will be sucked up through the wicking up to the top of the stove where I can then light it with a match. I hope you were able to see that. Here we have the can. The inner can is blue. The red is the alcohol level, which it just stays there. I can't hit it with a match. But if I put that liner in, the liner soaks up through capillary action the alcohol to put it up here at the top of the can. Then that I can light. And that's why the fancy feast stove. Now, I did run it the other day without a liner, but it didn't work as well. But putting the wicking wick liner inside these is what makes this, I think, a really good stove. And here now we can see the alcohol has gone down on this part because it's being soaked up into the wick. And this has soaked it up all the way to here. Now it might not soak it any higher, I'm not sure. You have a thing where gravity plays into this. The capillary action is only so strong. So it might just stop there. And that's where I was saying if you build a fancy feast stove of a different size, you have to be careful of the height because you always want to make the stove short enough that the alcohol will go up the wicking that you use. And in this case, <laughs> we could basically probably, well, let's see, it's solid about here. We could make a, cat, a fancy feast stove about that high with then the one inch on top of that for the pot stand part. So this is why we need wicking in the fancy feast stoves. I hope I hope I explained that so that people can understand it. I'm not that much of a, an explainer, but I just wanted to help Keith with that and the other people that had asked. So, I thank you for watching. I look forward to your input, questions, remarks, helpful suggestions. And as always, watch for my buddy Max. Bye now.